good day. I decided it was time to take down the Golden Gate, which were on the A-frame this side, and the Madeira Maroon, which were on the A-frame of bamboos on the other side. They, even if we got an Indian summer, they weren't going to produce any further. And you know what? I'd rather get this bed prepped for further things. We'll have a look at some of the beans that we have got when I pop into the shed because it's quite noisy and there's quite a few people down here uh, today, which is great. But yeah, I just wanted to get this bed prepped for something else. I think we'll be putting further brassicas into this bed. So I just thought best get on with that. I think the best harvest that we might have might be from these poppy seed heads which are still in here. So I'm going to cut these off before I take these poppy stalks out because I don't really want, I mean I love poppies don't get me wrong but I don't really want them in a bed that we're going to be growing food in. So yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on with that. I'm going to take off the seed heads on the poppies, take these out and then give this a, a rough forking over. I mean, there are still some beans. So when I go through this, I can see there are still some beans here. So I'll take those off and I'll be harvesting just the bean inside. But you know what? I can feel that soft, that soft. If the bean is soft inside, it will have to be used straight away. We're going to have a stew later, so it can go into that. But yeah, I'm going to basically prep this bed. So I'm going to take all of this out. Because there's quite a lot of bindweed in this bed and sank foil, the, all of this is going to be going into our brown Dalek perennial weed bin. So I don't want to put perennial weeds into any of the other compost bins that we have, whether it be the pallet or the Dalek. So yeah, I'm going to get on with that and then I'll show you what it looks like after. An hour or so later and the job is done. I've given this a pretty good weed and just tickled the top maybe 10 inches over with a fork. Where I have found deep sank foil, I have gone deeper than that with the fork and tried to pull the whole root out because it will just lay dormant otherwise. You can see here the Many of the runners are already drying, not quite rattling, but drying in their pods, some still coming, so we're just going to leave that now. And everything I've taken out of the bed has gone into this brown perennial weed compost bin. This twisty is all sank foil, and this is the type of root that you get on sank foil so this bit here you can see where it's not uh, pale is above ground then this bit well all of this bit below is below ground but this is sort of like in the top couple of inches of soil and then it comes down and then it's this long root I haven't got all of it off you can see some of it is broken off but I've got most of it so yeah this is the the nightmare sank foil give me bindweed any day in fact we looked at the other perennial weed compost bin on Sunday in last week's upload of a week at the plot and from about here down this is all compost usable compost it's only really this top band here that is fresh stuff so once i've emptied the other perennial weed compost bin i may think about emptying this one 
and putting just the top into the other perennial weed bin. But in the meantime, what I'm going to do is find cardboard, lay it all over the top here so that it really blocks out the light and put the lid on. Let me just put the lid on. It's an awkward lid, this one. Oh, can I put it on one handed? It's not fully on, but I'll do that later. And then if we come up here, we can see really the main harvests of our beans. So these were the, the Golden Gate. They went over so quickly that we had very few of them as a bean pod. And similar with the Madeira Maroon, the reason they're called Maroon is when they dry. Oh, I found one somewhere else. There we are. They go maroon, speckled maroon. Quite small. Yeah, quite small. So all of these, the ones that are semi-dried, will use fresh in soup. So all of these will be podded. The ones that are semi-dried will use fresh in soups. The dried ones will pop into the freezer for three or four days in a glass jar and then we'll take those out and use those reconstituted in meals over the winter. Taking some of our own tomatoes home, but also I've been gifted these three beauties, which are Croatian tomatoes, not sure of the name, but these have been grown in a Croatian family for many years and the seeds kept. So I'm going to let these um, really ripen up and then I'm going to save seeds from those so that is sort of very much like a black crim but has done better than our black crim this year and finally you can just see I think the bottom there the seeds coming out of the sunflowers we'll use those not sunflowers poppies we'll use those in a bread but that's it for today. More to do, but I'm just pleased I've got that bed done. Really pleased I've got that bed done. Right, see you soon. Bye. Good day. It's Wednesday afternoon and after quite a long morning doing a lot of paperwork at my desk. Well, we call it paperwork, but it's all on the computer now, isn't it? Or most of my work is on the computer. So after a long morning of, of doing that for, for Earth's sake, I came down here specifically to water the butternut squash and the cucumbers, the courgettes and the Oregon homestead sweet meat and also some lettuce in the polytunnel and as I came down I realized that the pond was quite empty at the front of the plot as well it's lost quite a lot of water I don't think anything's broken but I think it's just evaporation and the wind evaporating uh, water as well because there's a regular breeze blowing over it so I think that has evaporated water but also that the brassicas were really in need of water. Now I watered them last, I didn't do my normal Monday regime, I did that on Sunday. But actually the, the, the brassicas really needed a good water. So that's what I did, I, I, and I water through the nets, you know, I don't take the nets off. But I have noticed that one of them has got a bit of, um, aphid damage on it quite a few aphids and a bit of aphid damage on it so later or tomorrow depending upon time i think tomorrow why is my clock lost an hour it's saying it's 
I know it's about half past four and my clock is saying it's half past three. No, things, the time hasn't changed, has it? That's really odd. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't, I will be taking the brassicas off, uh, the nets off the brassicas and having a, a look at, yeah, the aphids. Yeah, that's really thrown me that. It's like time travel again. It's like time travel, talking about time travel last week. Anyway, following on from last week, and is it following on from Monday? I can't remember what we did Monday. No, Monday we did the beans, didn't we? It, Monday seems so long ago. It's only like two days. It just feels like a week ago. But anyway, as you know, I do highly scientific experiments. And the one that we're doing at the moment, in the middle of, is talking to plants and seeing whether talking to them firmly and robustly increases productivity and um, growth. And you'll remember our butternuts were not doing anything. They really were putting out lots of male flowers, not many female flowers. Anyway, they all started producing butternut. Of the eight plants, seven were producing butternuts. One was really holding out. Let's have a look at it now. Butternut here. Butternut there. Oh, butternut forming over there. Oh. Butternut in there. Oh, where's that one? Oh, butternut over there. There. And uh, then that button up there. Button up there. Oh, that's the button up from this one. Uh, button up there. And then the one that wasn't producing was this one. But look. Yay! So now every single plant has got at least one butternut growing. So we said at, la at the end of last week that our highly scientific experiment was proven because it was proven by the majority of plants taking action after a robust talking to. Now it's 100% proven because of this butternut forming on this one here and who knows whether we might get more fingers crossed right i'll leave it there see you soon bye Good day and welcome to Meteorological Autumn. Yes, 1st of September brings the first mention of autumn, true mention of autumn with it being the start of the meteorological quarter and meteorological autumn. I think the equinox is on the 23rd and that's when um, astronomical autumn begins so we've got just over three weeks before that and it's been a bit of a frustrating day so far i have to say i received a, a whatsapp message at 7 26 this morning and unfortunately a number of the sheds here had been broken into overnight and we now think it happened sort of around five six o'clock something like that um, or was certainly happening at that time because someone was down here early doing chicken cares actually and they heard voices but they thought it was voices out and around the, the site rather than on the site and yeah quite a lot of damage with those who've got padlocks on sheds so doesn't look as though anything is missing maybe little bits of cash but you know this is the the wise thing do not keep cash or 
tools or um you know expensive tools or certainly jewelry and things like that in your shed i do know that of someone who not here um and not even in london but um they they stated that they were keeping their family silver in their shed on the allotment that was a couple of years ago i thought that was a bit odd but yeah that's been frustrating so obviously taking photos making a report messaging everyone here we use various types of messaging whatsapp facebook and email um informing charity you know so yeah a pain in the posterior but uh there we are you know my my shed they bypassed um i don't have a padlock on my shed there's nothing in it of any value um, so, yeah, maybe because it didn't have a padlock and wasn't locked, it didn't look as though it had anything important or um, financially beneficial inside, which is true because there really isn't anything. My tools are bog standard, you know, all of that. Anyway, anyway, frustrating, frustrating. And of course, I've spoken to quite a few people today about that and we're all sort of like, you know, is it something that that is going to happen at allotment more and more often as the cost of living crisis increases? I hope not. I hope not, because for many of us, this for many of us, it's a little haven, you know, away from the world, if you like. Anyway, anyway, so I've done more watering today. I've been checking on the butternuts again. You know, it's a bit like doing seedlings, isn't it? You sow the seeds and then the next day you're checking on them. Um, I know that um, Anne, her, she sowed some seeds a, a week ago and I think it's her, was it her, her, um, her grandson, I think, was checking on them or something the day after they'd been sown. But um, yeah, let's just have a quick look at the Portuguese cabbage and the turnips because they are doing OK. So on the left, we have our Portuguese cabbage, which you can see are getting true leaves. I mean, even the smaller ones are beginning to get true leaves, the third leaf coming. And then these are our purple top Milan turnips. These are our Goldana turnips. And I think I'm going to be thinning some of these because there's there's a lot that have germinated in here. And actually, you do want to to make sure there's enough room for these to to grow to full size. So, you know, I think I think four or five in here. Uh, sorry, three or four in here is is plenty. Take that one out. That's four. That'll do. Um. I'll do the others in a minute, though I don't think there's two. It was just very heavy handed in this one, I think. But yeah, these are actually quite dry. So I'm going to be giving them a water. I gave them a water yesterday. But as I was saying, we've got quite a drying wind at the moment, a constant drying wind over the site. And um, yeah, because these are open, as you remember, they, there's no plastic in the top here they do tend to dry out as well. So I'm going to give them a little bit of a water. And I'm going to do some tomato picking and sort of leave it at that. Oh, I did mention yesterday, didn't I, about the aphids on some of our brassicas. Look, look at that. <gasps> Wow, I didn't notice that yesterday. I noticed them on here. Um, let's just lift this up. Oh. Yeah, you can see the aphids on there, I hope. I'm going to give those a spray, but I hadn't noticed them on here. Oh, look, I mean, just clouds. Yeah, I better sort that out now. So, yeah, I'm actually going to just rub these off with uh, um, my hands, but I'm going to put my hands into gloves first. So I'm going to say goodbye and get on with that job. And I'll see you again very soon. Bye.
good day. As you can see, I decided to get on with the flower border bed today. It's moving towards a wildflower border bed, which is great. But there are some things in there like the Santolini, which is this here. The, oh, what's that called? Flax, which is the, is that the native flower of New Zealand? and rosemary and a couple of other things in there that may not be wildflowers but I'm going to be leaving those in but because I want this to go towards being a wildflower border I don't want too many nutrients in this soil so I've cut back with shears and you can see the detritus all along here along here and over here and yeah, I'm just pretty pleased with what I've done today because it, get, it gives me a chance to look at what is there. And I can see that there's some cooch grass in there and some sank foil in there and a little bit of bindweed, which isn't a surprise. So over the coming months, when I've got a spare 10 minutes, I can get my knee pad out and just do some weeding, taking out that cooch grass, taking out the sank foil and taking out the bindweed, but leaving everything else in there. Let's just have a, a closer look. So looking on the far end, this is Santolini, Spanish lavender. We've got either a cardoon or a asparagus self-seeded there. Here we can see seed heads of Love in the Mist, which we'll just leave. This is um, lemon balm. But along the edge here, we can also see cooch grass. And that I want to take out. We've got sank foil here, the five leafed wild strawberry. I want to take that out. Um, we've got no bindweed I can see down this end. Quite a lot of grasses. I've cut that back, but I'm also going to leave that as a run for wildlife. We've got, I was going to say hedgehogs, we've got um, uh, frogs living in this area. We've got, I know I've seen two under here. And this is a a um what you call it oh evening primrose so this it looks as though it's going to flower again but there's seeds in here i'm not sure if you can see the black in there so those i'm quite happy for those to self seed in here we've got dandelion over there um what's this not sure what that is but clearly it's self-seeded. We've got some sort of little mallow down there. Not quite sure what this is. A couple of um, lilies in there. So yeah, you know, this gives me a chance to really have a look at what what is in here. And as I say, really the only things I want to take out the bindweed and the sank foil. So look here, I can see, look at that, sank foil putting out leaders. So yeah, I'm going to leave that whole thing, so I'm going to take that out at some point. But yeah, this is, um, you know, frog land as well. So I have to make sure that I leave coverage for frogs. I'm not sure if we can see any Oh, there's a pot in there. That pot can come out. Don't want that in there. Oh, there's a frog over there. Can you see? Yeah. So obviously I'm being careful with my feet. But yeah, I'm glad to have just got a start on this. <laughs> no, it's not perfect. Don't really want a 
wildflower bed to be perfect but um, I do want to keep on top of it that's the important thing and at least I've started and over the coming months as I say when I've got you know 10 minutes 20 minutes half an hour I can get on my hands and knees and take out the plants in there that I don't want to proliferate and all of this is going to go into a another bin and this is going to start off the perennial bin once it has been emptied and I hope we're going to be doing that in the next week emptying that perennial weed bin and then all of this can go into it in the meantime oh when I tidied this area up yesterday I took all the peas out though I have noticed one has germinated here, a pea has self, well, <laughs> fallen on the ground and germinated. So I've tidied these areas up. Need a hoe to get the weeds out. I've also been tidying around this area. Oh, sorry. Took all of the plants that were here that were going to seed. Um, I didn't want them to seed, so they have come out. And then coming full circle an area i will definitely be starting on soon that's definitely in the terms of might be most probably could be likely will be yeah definitely and all of this is weed that i've been taking out to form the new perennial weed compost bin so everything I've cut today is going to go in here. Right. I'm going to leave it there for today. And I'll most probably see you again briefly tomorrow. Bye. Good day. And welcome to Sunday morning at the plot. That's not a new segment I'm doing, by the way. Oh, that'd be quite a good idea. But no, that's not a new segment I'm doing at the moment. I'm just down here for a few quiet hours. I don't have anything particularly that I want to do, but I'm just going to be pottering and going around the site. And when I see jobs that maybe I've been putting off for a while, if I feel in the mood to do them, I'm doing them. So... When I was just walking around before, I was looking at the cucumbers to see how those cucumbers are maturing and they're maturing quite well. These are the ones we're going to be saving seeds from. I noticed yet again our asparagus, our tubs of asparagus. There were quite a few weeds in there, so I decided to get my kneeler here and um, just go and weed those tubs. So they're now clear of weeds, which is great. There's still some fronds there, so I'm leaving those. And I'm going to put some well-rotted um, compost mixed with some horse manure on top over the winter when we, when we get some, because we're due a delivery. We're most probably gonna do another bulk order of compost for the whole site maybe in a month or so, so that people can top dress over winter. But what I did want to mention was um, the compost bin, the perennial weed compost bin that sits on the ground, our Dalek one. It doesn't quite look like a Dalek, but it is a Dalek compost bin. Because when I put the brassica leaf that had all those aphids i decided to take the whole leaf off and just put it into our perennial weed compost bin and as i did that i noticed there were a whole load of worms at the top of the perennial weed compost bin going through what we had you know um put in very very recently this week and i thought i would show you that in a minute but what it reminded me of is a question that Astrid asked last week when we were looking at the closed perennial bin compost bin that we have. Um, there's no holes in it whatsoever. It's just a, a large waste bin that, you know, they use to to put rubbish into trucks for municipal waste collection. There are no holes in it whatsoever. 
And Astrid asks, how did the worms get into that bin if the bin has no holes in it whatsoever? Well, obviously, when we're taking out, obviously, that sounds rude. Sorry, Astrid, I don't mean that. Um, when we're taking out weeds, perennial weeds, many of them are quite deep rooted, particularly the sank foil. As we know, that can go down to, you know, 18 inches quite easily as a tap root. Bindweed can be really deep as well. But also things like cooch grass, which are, you know, shallow rooted, but a pain in the ass. I mean, they, you know, it really is because it travels so quickly. Um, when we take those out, there's obviously some ground on there and that ground may contain eggs of worms, you know, worm sacs and worm eggs. There might also be some tiny worms in that, that um, soil. So when we put things into the compost bin, even though it's closed, by putting things in, we're adding creatures and adding, you know, things that will break down the, um, the perennial weeds that we're putting into that bin. So it's not a matter that we put the worms in to break that down. We do have a vermicomposting system, which is at the back of the poly. But in that perennial compost bin, any of the worms that are there have come in either as small worms on um, in the ground or on roots as we put them into the bin, or they've come in because there's been eggs or egg sacs of worms on what we put into the bin. So yeah, it's, um, I mean, you know, they are quite magic. You think they magically appear, but obviously there's a reason why they do appear. Um, but yeah, let me take you, let me see if the same thing happens today as happened the other day when I opened the Dalek perennial weed compost bin, because when I did, there was a whole host of worms at the top. So let me set up the camera and let's see if that happens again. And then you can see how effectively worms come to the, to the top of the the compost they have created to feed on whatever new things you put in there let me set up the camera and let's have a look i hope this works if it doesn't i'll look stupid right? but that's not difficult anyway let's do it hopefully you can see worms here and here so this this is the cabbage leaf that we put in earlier you can see there's a worm there so these worms were already in the compost and have come to the surface to start feeding up here. If we left this open, the worms would start going down. You can see this one here is starting sort of to go down, I think. This one here. Yeah, because they obviously don't like the light. Hopefully you can see that. But what I am going to do now, which is what I said I was going to do, is cover this whole area in cardboard, which will really keep the light out, but also help keep heat in. As you know, we took the other beans here out earlier in the week, and I was thinking about taking these out, but what I have noticed, you see here, um, there's a bean here forming. So, I'm actually going to leave these in but because we have a good few days of rain coming I'm going to take all of the dried pods off because I don't want these to get wet over a number of days to then have to dry again so any pods that are crispy like this even though they're not rattling I'm going to take off so yeah that's the job I'm going to do now yeah and then i'm just gonna carry on pottering oh look it's a shield bug oh doesn't want to be seen there's another one there that's quite a oh i can't see it there that's gone from being spotted black to as it is um what are they? I think they're a, a American invasion, those, sh that type of shield bug anyway. But yeah, look, I'm waffling, I'm waffling. I will see you very soon. Oh no, I wanted to show you something else. I wanted to show you something else. 
butternut let's let's sort of finish on the butternuts this long one here nothing 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 look you see that tiny one there will that flower and produce i don't know we'll have to see but the others yep they're doing pretty okay right i'm gonna leave it there because it's pretty breezy see you again very soon bye